Hi everybody, welcome to Catherine Sews. Today I'm going to show you how to make this double drawstring backpack. It's actually pretty easy and there's no grommets or eyelets at the bottom so that makes it easier than a lot of tutorials. Um, usually, oh my gosh, it's amazing to me how my room always looks nice and organized on YouTube but there's a million projects going on here. Okay, usually these kinds of backpacks have these like grommets in there or eyelets for the string to pass through. We're gonna do it in an easier way where you don't have to do that. In fact, I'm gonna give you two options for the bottom corner. One where we sew a little loop into that corner so the cord passes through, and one where we sew the two ends of the cord right into the bag. Both work well and I'll show you why you might prefer one over the other. You might have seen my tutorial on a single string drawstring bag, the little cute gray polka dot one. Very similar process. The only difference is this has two drawstrings, two gaps in the side for the strings to pass through, and we're gonna stick the string in at the bottom. This one we're gonna add a pocket to, but that's optional. I have two of these giant black nylon bags left over from the rugs that I bought for my deck. They came nicely stored in those, but I'm never gonna roll them back up and throw them, especially since I sewed them together in that other video. So I'm gonna use this fabric and I'm gonna use the top edge and a piece of the Velcro to make the pocket. So if you're ready and you want to sew along, come join me. All you're going to need is some kind of nylon fabric. You know what though? This, you could use a reusable shopping bag. I've even seen these made with t-shirts and that's kind of cute. So lots of different options for fabrics. I, I kind of like though having something that's a little bit weatherproof. So the nylon is great, like a ripstop nylon would be good. Anything you can get your hands on like that. The size of the fabric you're, you're gonna need is we, we're gonna use two 18 inch by 18 inch squares. So we'll need two of those, and then we'll need something to, draw, to be the drawstring. So this is four meters of cord, and you really do need four meters, two for each side. So other than that, you need your, your matching thread and a sewing machine. Um, and again, I'm gonna do some serging on here, but the serging is always optional. You can always exact. Okay, let's get started. And this one is made from two rectangles that are 16 by 18 inches. This one I made 18 by 18, but I think maybe the 18, it doesn't have to be that wide. So I think the second one I make here, um, can be the 16 by 18. So I'm going to start by cutting the ends off the bag. I did think about using these ends, but it has this heavy cord in here that I don't think I'd be able to sew through. No. So my awesome snip and tear technique does not work on this fabric at all. That is not going to tear. So I'm going to use a ruler and wax to draw my lines with. If I line up the bottom of the bag with a line on my board here, I can be sure to have my lines go at a right angle. And if you don't have a board like this, you'll just need to take a little precaution to make sure you get a right angle. You can even just use a piece of computer paper to get your right angle. So this piece is now 35 inches. It'll be 17 and a half instead of the full 18. And that's gonna be fine. I'm gonna save these handles for some other use. But I'm gonna put this seam right down the middle. So just cause I think that'll look a bit better. It'll look more like that seam is on purpose. So I wanna measure, um, eight inches from either side of that seam. So I'll go back in half and fold it right on that seam and eight inches. Same to this one. Thank you. 
And now, all I still want to get is the pocket. And I want to use a piece that has this, but I don't really want the label. So there we go. I'll cut the pocket right out of here. I'll probably end up shortening that. If I want this tab to be right in the center, then this is going five inches that way, so I can make it five inches on either side of that tab. Good. So there's my pocket. This has a long piece of the loop side of the Velcro. I can actually just cut that off. I can just, I don't need so much. So I'll just cut that in half. Now where I cut that strap, see it's starting to fray already. You want a little, just a little bit of a melt there to hold those edges together. It's gonna be hot, so don't touch it for a second. Um, but there you go, that won't fray anymore. And then I need a piece of the hook side of the Velcro. It must be right there. Good. So I'm going to spend a second and unpick this so that I can sew it to the outside of the bag, first of all. Good. This is the pocket with the loop side. I'm going to stick the hook side, but I'm not going to press hard, just lightly together. I'm going to sort of center that pocket. So I want this to be right on top of the seam. That'll work out. And I can't press this fabric, right? I'm afraid I'm going to melt it. So I'm just going to turn under those edges. Just turning under about a quarter inch, a little less than a centimeter. It does finger press well. Maybe I can even do it this way so I can see better. Nice. It's important not to have the pocket too high because remember all this is going to gather in so the pocket needs to be kind of in the lower half so with the pocket placed like that i want to just lift up that one and now i know exactly where i need this one to be sewn so i mean it sometimes velcro is so hard to pin there we go just one pin on there will do i'm going to go to the machine and sew a nice rectangle around here and three sides of the rectangle here. I'm going to make sure I do good back tacks on these corners because that'll be a point of stress. And nice clean pivots on these corners. I'll be sewing nice and close to that edge. There we go. I thought I was filming, but I was not. But you can see I sewed down the Velcro and then I sewed the three sides of the pocket with nice strong back tacks at the top, making sure that the corners stayed tucked in nicely and with nice clean pivots at the bottom corners here. The front and the back can now go right sides together. And I'm gonna be sewing around the three sides here, but not all the way around. I'm gonna leave a gap at the top that is about one and three quarters of an inch, or about four and a half centimeters. And then I think I'll leave just about the same amount at the bottom, an inch and three quarters or four and a half centimeters at the top and bottom. I'm leaving the whole top edge open, of course, because that's the opening of the bag, but I'm gonna sew here all the way across the whole bottom and then there. Here's a second option for the bottom corners. If you want the cord to be able to be more self-adjusting, you can take a piece of your cord that's, let's say this is two and a half inches long, six centimeters, fold that in half, and then you're gonna just place it inside the seam you're about to sew with all the raw edges together, put a couple of pins so it stays nice and close together, and that's gonna stay right in there. I've got it about at the inch and three quarter mark, like I already marked for leaving the gap on the first option. And then when you sew that through, that loop will be on the outside for the cord to pass through. Nice and easy way. Um, still not having to put eyelets in, but now the cord can be adjustable. Starting at that wax mark that I drew, and I'm at the 15 line or the 5 8 line, starting right there with a good back tab. And so right down to my next wax line. And jump 
and over and sewing across the bottom edge. And then jumping over to that next wax mark and coming up this side. I want to be able to serge these edges, but not here and not at my gap. So I'm going to snip in here and in here so that I can serge three separate sections, but leave these gaps still open. And if you're zigzagging, you'll just zigzag right on the edge of the same section. So right beside where I just sewed is where I'm going to serge. So because I snipped in there, I can move that top part out of the way. Across the bottom. And up the other side. So each time moving that gap away. I also want to serge the two separate edges of the top. So just a single layer here. Now we want to clean up the edges that are going to be the opening of the casing on both sides. So I, where I snipped, I can easily turn under um, about a centimeter and a half, but I want to just tuck in the raw edge too. So I've got just that tiny little hem here. Now you can see on my prototype here that all of this wear coming here is going to be, that problem is going to be solved by the fact of turning under those edges and stitching. Fold under the full amount and then tuck in the raw edge. Underneath I've got everything pushed out of the way. And same on the other side. Fold under the full amount and then tuck in the raw edge. Okay, we've got some threads to trim up. Now I want to fold that casing in half. I'm bringing this serged edge down to meet that edge. And I'm just going to keep finger pressing because that's working pretty well. But I'll throw a few pins in there too. Holding this one down even. So now I'm going to be sewing right on that serging all the way around this circle, making the casing, but the casing is going to have that opening on both sides. And my back tack is crossing over from one side to the other, so it's going to be one smooth continuous line. And my guide right now is the one inch or 25 millimeter mark, the 25 line. And my cord is two meters long or two yards. It's about the same thing. So I just want to make two the same. One. Good. And I'll pop that on a safety pin. And with this one, I'm going to start at this end and go around. And with the other one, I'll start at this end and go around. So they cross paths. Just push, push, and pull. Push, 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 and pull. This is the same as uh, we did on the boxer shorts, just pushing an elastic through the casing. Easy peasy. So this one is starting, like going in and coming out this side. This one is going to go in and come out on this side. We're going to be tucking them into that bottom corner. Okay, flipping the bag right side out now. 
And then I just need to take my two strings, stick them inside the gap I left, and then reach in and grab them. I'm gonna grab that whole corner and the strings and pull that through. Good. So now I wanna close up that gap and sew that closed. So you can see that I've got the two bits of cord sticking right outside that gap and they're pushed right down to the bottom edge of the bag. And I'm gonna sew that closed. And do a nice strong back tack right across the strings there because that will be a point of tension. And then I'm gonna cut off the extra fabric right around the corner there to reduce any bulk. And same on both sides. And then flip the bag right side out. I want to be able to sew right across this corner on an angle. I'm going to put a pin at an inch and a half up from the bottom there. And an inch and a half in here. I don't really want to mark this with chalk because sometimes, sometimes the chalk is hard to remove. And I don't want to mark it with wax because to iron it off, I might melt the bag. So I'm just going to sew from one pin to the other. Okay, and just to make sure it's nice and strong, I'm going to sew close to the edge on the other two sides of that triangle. So that looks really nice and neat. And what it does is that it seals the opening from the inside. So inside the bag, we're not going to have, you know, the raw ends of the strings. It's just going to be nicely sealed in there. Same on the other side, and then we are done. So with the loop sewn in there, I'm going to thread my cord the same way that I did the first style. Now the cord's gonna come down, go through that loop, and then you can put two ends together and tie those together. Try to bring your knot right down to the end of the, of the cord there, nice and tight. It's not quite as neat because you do have this knot, but it is maybe more convenient because you know, the, the cord will even itself out because it can slip through here easily. So there you have it. There's our double drawstring shoulder backpack made from a repurposed nylon bag. No eyelets, super easy and fast. That's a good one. If you like today's video, please give it a thumbs up and think about subscribing because that means a lot to me. I really appreciate it. Until next time, take care. Here's a sneak preview of my next video. This is my husband's shirt that he got at Christmas. That's seven months ago and the tags are still on it. It's all still exactly as it was because he's never gonna wear this bright colored plaid. So I hope my mother-in-law's not watching, but I'm wondering, can I dye this black and see maybe if he'll wear it? We'll see, see you next time.